Hello everyone. Welcome to our podcast, the new segment of for the life craft. The podcast, especially if you know already, it has been designed to aid in achieving growth, success, and happiness. We all aspire to do. Now, especially today, or rather in the current times where challenges are being faced on an everyday. basis especially what is going on in our political arena our maybe it could be personal or professional arena what i personally believe is any challenges can be negotiated navigated and can be overcome if we have the right mindset and right approach of doing things with that in mind i am i have brought a topic for today which we are going to discuss with dr elia which i am going to introduce soon i am sure you are going to all be very excited to listen and uh, what he has to share but topic for today is how do we navigate any crisis in essentially any challenges while maintaining your happiness and wellness intact now this topic is very important but i personally believe and uh, challenge and happiness doesn't have to be mutually exclusive with and that is exactly what i would like to discuss with elia dr elia who is on board and let me introduce him first of all thank you dr elia for being on this podcast and it, you have been really generous enough to fit in the, in the schedule you have been very good dear friend to me i have known you for years now and you have been a kind of a guiding light so to say for me to achieve my vision and follow through my purpose and passion so thank you again for being here it's my honor and it's my pleasure and i'm grateful to be here rupak and i'm excited to share some thoughts with you and your audience thank you so much so uh, friends uh, let me introduce dr elia officially Dr. Ilya Gorgorius is the founder of the Happiness Center, an organization of world-leading experts in the field of positive psychology. Together with that, he is with his team. They have helped thousands of individuals, both personally and professionally, to achieve happiness, success, and wellness. What a great, fulfilling, and satisfying feeling that must be. Dr. Ilya, how and I'm truly feeling rewarded to have you and just be uh, share the screen with you. So thank you again. <laughs> thank you, Rupak. Again, let me further mention that Dr. Ilya is a happiness and wellness expert, and he is holding number one as a best-selling author of Seven Paths to Lasting Happiness, which has been translated in five languages. I have personally gone through each chapter, each seven. Path and it has been truly commendable, and I would let our listener know further details as we go into it. Having said uh, said that, uh, anything I would like to invite Dr. Ilya to share anything about what journey he is on currently, what agenda, and uh, he want he is bringing to the world. If you can share few things before we dive into some of the. core questions regarding handling crisis with happiness and wellness intact please ilia uh thank you rupak you know for me at this stage in my life i i was taught something when i was 5 years old that has really guided my life and it was taught by my grandfather whose name i carry my grandfather ilia who by the way passed away when i was only 6 years old so i i don't have a lot of memories from him but when i was 5 years old listen to this this is how my life actually started in in a lot of ways It's one of the few memories that I have of him. He sat down with me and I think he must have known that he would be dying soon and he said my boy this is in Greek of course this is back in Greece when I was growing up. It's on translating it roughly. He said my boy if you want to be the richest man in the world this is what you need to do. So my little ears like a little boy like my ears got this big I'm like wow the richest man in the world he goes do something good for somebody else every day and you will be the richest man in the world. Now in my wow. little brain no I know but in my little brain of course I thought richness meant wealth you know materialism and wealth and money and gold and all that so like a 5 year old little kid right I didn't understand what he meant at the time but his message was but I did get the message to something good for somebody else every day 
and you live a happy life. And that has basically has become my life's purpose. And my life's purpose has been since then, uh, I kid you not, to leave this world better than I found it. So, you know, and I feel like, feel very blessed, honestly, like if my time comes and I transition over to the other side sometime soon, that I have left this world better than I found it. That no, I, I Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's my, that's my, that's where my heart is, honestly. No, I think uh, it, it is reflecting very much from your aura, from the, from your face itself. Uh, you have been so calm, so happy, blissful, and that can only happen, which I know for sure, when you have this kind heart to, to make sure that each and every individual you come into connection is happy and, and not just by talking, but, but providing the real time tools to figure out what is happiness. And, and I totally am awed by your motto that happiness is a choice and it is a skill set which everybody can learn and you are on the, on the your mission to make sure that happens. So thank really appreciate. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, now I know that uh, you have been working and being in this part of uh, sharing and cultivating happiness in the community in the around around the world from last twenty five years, and you have helped thousands of people already to achieve the happiness in both professional and personal relationship through your coach coaching and keynotes. I totally am convinced that you are the happiness expert. <laughs> but <laughs> and in fact uh, to on on a lighter side i do call you at least i consider you as a happiness doctor so if, if you may will <laughs> so so can you share why this happiness is so important to all of us and what exactly it means uh, and why it how to get it into our meaning to live a meaningful life what is this happiness is all about and why everyone uh, it what uh, should make it as a priority. So a couple of things. The the great, you know, and famous Greek philosopher Aristotle 2,500 years ago said the following. Aristotle said that happiness is the whole purpose and meaning of life, the whole aim and end of human existence. Think about that statement, that basically happiness is what, is, what this life is all about. And you and I met... At a, at a worldwide conference in New York City several years ago before the pandemic. And I was the opening keynote speaker, if you remember. And, right. and, and I, I asked the audience, but I ask every audience, no matter what country I'm in, the same question before I even start my talk. And I say this, and you're a parent too, so you can relate to this. If you were to ask any parent, regardless of nationality, ethnicity, religious affiliation, gender, uh, socioeconomic status, this one question, Mm -hmm. What would you like for your children? What is the answer to that question? And if you remember in the room, I took the mic and I pointed the audience yes. and they're like, I just want them to be, and the other goes, happy. <laughs> and, that's, and that's universal. I don't care if you're from Greece. I don't care from the, if you're Canadian. I don't care if you're from India. I don't care if you're from Africa. I don't care where you're from. We all want our kids to be happy and healthy. So if that's the case for our kids, Shouldn't that also be true for ourselves, for us to search and do the work that we need to do? Because it does take work. Yes, it's a choice. But like you said uh, very eloquently, it's also a skill set. It's something that everybody can learn. So that's why happiness to me is the most important thing in life. I, I totally agree. And uh, what a beautiful explanation and understanding you have shared, which can be related to anybody who has been yeah. listening uh, in any and could be in any phase of life because... That is what we have been, we are here for that. It doesn't have to be always you have been in, in one part particular uh, ac activity or area of life that only then you, are, you need to be focused in on happiness. Any step of the way, I think we all must be making sure that happiness in uh, should be our priority and aim to ensure that we are not only we are happy, but our children, our surrounding, and we make every effort to stay that, stay in that mindset to make it, make this world beautiful to live for us and our children, like you rightly pointed out. So excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, so ca ca taking to the next level, right? Uh, we did talk about that uh, happiness is a choice 
happiness is a skill set now i i'm sure not everybody would be able to relate that easily because uh, this is a wide subject people here most of them before pandemic at least have been chasing to lot of material aspects of life chasing maybe the career goals chasing their uh, titles and i don't say that they are wrong but knowing after pandemic i think things slow down people did realize what actually matters people were able to spend some time with their family and everything so if you can share especially now that you are a leading authority in happiness for at a personal and corporate wellness and especially very much in the every continent i would say with your presentations and conference and keynote how exactly that works in real life what are the core aspect we need to keep in mind when you embark of your any uh, pursuit or endeavor especially in any but at that time challenges are going to come so what how do you think that would that works in the real life No I think when human beings face challenges they really fall into four different categories in terms of personality or in in terms of how they react to these challenges and the first one we'd like to call the victim mm. and the victim is like why is this happening to me like poor me and they get down and they get depressed and they're sad and they're like you know and it, it that ha- happened especially during the pandemic I had a lot of people say that to me and I'm like you know what It's not just happening to you. This is happening to eight billion other people. You're not alone. We're all in this together. Mm. That's the mentality. That's number one. The second one is the critic, and the critic. Any time they go into blame mode, they get angry, they get frustrated, and they'll blame the government or the World Health Organization or their boss or their spouse or their kid or their. They do blame, 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 and they're frustrated and angry and just miserable. Right. That's number two. The third one we like to call the bystander basically someone who sits on the side mm. but I could also call them the fearful one and in essence these are wonderful people who are just so overwhelmed by the rapid changes that are taking place and a lot of forces and a lot of events beyond their control so they feel so out of control and they're just basically frozen in fear it's like the deer with the headlights so they just don't know what to do and they don't do anything and what all three of these have in common of course is that none of them move the needle forward to some kind of positive resolution to some positive outcome you know either it's poor me or i get mad or i'm frozen in fear then we get to the fourth personality type which i like to call the navigator and the call to action of course is for you and i and for all your listeners to strive to become navigators mm. what navigators do very well and successfully in 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 how do navigators become happy mm. i will share that with you in 1 minute but it, this is an important point it's not like well dr ely and rubak were navigators and everybody else is victim or critic like no but i used to be a clinical psychologist that was the first half of my career in private practice so now i'm wearing my psychology hat all four of those personality types exist within each human each of us each of us because that's just human nature meaning that i can be i've been a victim and i've been a critical and i've been you know yes. but here's the key If you're going to if you feel like because sometimes that does happen feel sorry for you things to happen you're kind of like do it do it for an hour feel your feelings because you got to feel it to heal it as they say right Beautiful. and then give it and become a navigator sometimes i was mad at the government at times or i've been mad at thing but if i stayed mad at some world organization for the next 6 months who am i hurting them or myself so If you want to get mad get mad do it for half an hour get out of your system yeah. and then become a navigator and it, it, even with the fear because the media unfortunately and I don't want to get political in this but it's very fear based mm-hmm. you know every day it's like breaking news with this horrible sound da 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 and like you know I don't listen to that anymore I mean I'm aware and I read and I'm informed but yeah. I don't need to fear and I will tell you this even in the middle of the pandemic obviously I couldn't do my keynotes because nobody could travel but I ended up doing it on Zoom like we're doing right now in my approach even in the in the in the at the very beginning was not that I didn't take it seriously I did but I was not going to give into the fear and and I had some people in the audience a lot of times we would do a Q&A you know I do a 45 minute keynote and then we have like 10 15 key and people would say well Dr. Elliot you seem a little bit like too relaxed 
about this. I said, no, it's not that I'm relaxed, but I'm not into fear. They're like, well, what if you get sick? And I'm like, yes. okay. And then what? So, mm -hmm. No, no, listen to this. Well, what if you get really sick? I'm like, okay. And then what? Well, what if you die? And I'm like, you know what? And then what? <laughs> and I'm not saying that I want to die. That's not, that's not the message, right? I'm not, I have, you know, family and I, I have a great life and so on. But what I am saying is like, I can't live my life in fear and be happy at the same time. So I choose happiness over fear. Beautiful. Right? And by the way, we're all going to die at some point. So That is true. Then why uh, fear? Yeah, this is nothing to fear. This is just a transition to a higher plane. It, it, it really is what's going to happen to, to all of us. We're all going to move through that portal and go to, such, to some other place. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but I'm not afraid of it. And I'm serious about that. Now, that doesn't mean that you should take precautions or protect. That's not what I'm saying. I just don't want to live in fear. Fear is not my friend, period. So now, what do navigators do consistently if we all want to be navigators? And they do several things consistently. The first and foremost is that they practice great self-care. Meaning, I, yes. if you don't take care of yourself, and I'm talking not, not just physically, I'm talking about emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, you're going to suffer. So, you know, when the pandemic hit, obviously everybody's stress level went up, including my own. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll give you just one example, just a small example of self-care. There's lots of different ways. I used to walk like three times a week for an hour, like three miles, like, because I felt like I had to, I got gray hair, I'm getting older, I got to move. I kind of had to do it. When the pandemic hit and my own stress level went up and I had to take care of my family, extended family all over the country and the world, actually, Greece, here, New York, I mean, I have, you know, California. And my clients and my friends and, and everybody else, I realized that your level of self-care is very mediocre, Ilya. And I started to walk every single day, mm -hmm. at least three miles a day, sometimes six miles a day, in from April of 2020. So this is at the beginning of the pandemic. And now it's become something that I want to do, not I have to do, which is different. And non, that to me is a non-negotiable. And when I go for my walk, sometimes I don't even take my phone with me. Like 50% of the time I leave my phone at home and I walk and I, and I do what I call my gratitude walk. Mm -hmm. I walk and I look at the blue skies and I give thanks for the blue skies. And I look at the trees and I look at the, the lakes or the creek. Being out in nature, of course, is very beneficial. And the little animals running around and so on. And I'm in deep gratitude for my relationships my relationship with God, my relationship with my family, my relationship with friends and colleagues and so on. And you know that you cannot be depressed and grateful simultaneously. On the same thing. Yep. Like physiologic, like your brain, you can't because when we're in a state of gratitude, there are certain chemicals that are chemicals. released. Endorphins, the dopamine, you know, and so on. Well, guess what? You can't be depressed and grateful at the same time. So the quickest way to get out of, you know, being down is to practice gratitude now having said that when life is going well rupak it's easy to be grateful i can do like i can write three things on my gratitude journal every day for 365 days and never repeat myself when things are going well the question of course is can you be grateful when things, are, things not are not going wrong yeah and i claim that we're all graduates from the university of adversity as you know Beautiful. You know, and, and the older we get, the higher the degree, because we've lived longer and we face more adversity. So so that's the key question. Is that even possible? And I will go back to one of my role models and, and uh, some that I've looked up my entire life, Nelson Mandela, who said the following wise statement. He says, in life, either you win or you learn. Mm. So you and I have had certain, some successes in life, of course. But do you know that the greatest lessons I've ever learned did not come from my successes? They came from what seemed to be failures. Absolutely. When things did not work out, when things were like, and I'm like, man, so I could, and I could have, I never gone to victim mode, but I don't stay there for too long. I'm like, okay, now go back to what Nelson Mandel said. What am I supposed to learn from this? And then I got the lesson. I was in gratitude for my adversity. I know that may sound hard to believe. But no, I, one, <laughs> one door closed and I'm panic mode and in the middle of that, and that's where faith comes in too. But, and then another door opened up even better than the door that I, that closed. No, but I think fear I, mode in between, be, before the other door, you're in fear mode because we're human beings and we, we get scared sometimes. How am I going to provide for my family? How am I going to take care of this or, or whatever? And, and that's it. Learn the lesson and you're, you never lose. 
I think uh, you have given the wisdom, which if I can say that if person would follow this, the talk what you shared, because it's something anybody at any point of life can easily navigate because you said it so beautifully that after all, we are the navigators and we all have ability and capability to do that. And you have beautifully viewed it for with the four personality types and its resolution or how exactly you can do it by doing the self-care, by doing the gratitude, by ensuring you put it in your journal. Because, and I I still it occurs the metaphor you gave of the deer, because it it I just passed the deer while I was on run because like you walk every day I run every day and you know me I'm a marathon runner and we talk yes, about it yes. I still run and every evening, and when deer when deer uh, passes through the uh, through the road and I saw in person and I can relate what you are talking about he was in crisis he was in fear. He literally, I could see in his eyes that uh, he was almost uh, blindfolded. Yes. But that is not we want to live our life with. We are not the people who just run in, run across without seeing anything what is happening behind. We want to stay calm. We want to stay focused. We want to ensure that we look at the situation all around and navigate through the crossroad or with the in between the traffic. And thank you. I, I think uh, you shared it all the elements to how you may not be the deer, which you can easily be and which we normally have been practiced. But we have our not the uh, amygdala is there. We'll always catch on to the fear, but we have the frontal cortex which you must you have been sharing multiple times in, in your keynote, which I have listened. And we have opportunity to use the, uh, the self care routines, journaling, gratitude, like you mentioned, to ensure that we navigate the challenges crisis in the most optimal way without affecting our personal life professional life and we take care of ourselves so i i i am in a i truly and uh i'm sure our listeners would be pretty pretty convinced that the wisdom again i want to mention that this wisdom i think only you can share because you have lived it you are living it every day and i think we i'm really grateful for you to share on this platform and so thank you so much really appreciate what you have shared today and, you know and i do live it i mean people say like like you seem to be like i generally it's not like i haven't had tragedies in my life or things that haven't worked out many i times. remember I, I i don't know it i, I lost my my parents yes. young i mean it's not it's not like uh you know that i had, grew up in a great family but unfortunately my mom died of cancer when i was a was a young man and that changed my life also pr profoundly but i just yeah, I do live it, and I and I practice it. And you know, when the the pandemic happened, me and a good friend of mine co-wrote a book. It was the first book to market in the world because it came out in May of 2020. Like seven keys to navigating a crisis: how to emotionally deal with pandemics and other disasters. And it, part of that is, and part of the self care uh, chapter was that I um, created a personal health assessment, hmm. which I can share with you that you can share with your listeners too. I can send I you the. You can, yeah, it's for, I, I mean, would love to, if you can share the link. Uh, yes. I would, uh, yeah. 20 questions, you know, in these four different categories, physically, mostly mentally and spiritually. And, you know, you rate yourself from a scale of one through five. Five is actually perfection. We don't care about that. Four is like, I'm doing it really well. Three is I'm, I'm doing some of the things sometimes. And three is not a bad score. People are like, oh, three is I'm like, oh, that's a terrible score. I'm like, no, it means you're doing it. You're yes. just not doing it consistently enough. Consistent. So there's more improvement. However, if you score yourself a one, which is, means never, or two, I rarely do this, that's a red flag. Mm. And any of those answers that you score a one or a two, you need to take a look at because that definitely will rob you of your health and your happiness. And by the way, I created this assessment. It's been shared with hundreds of thousands of people all over the world. I take my own assessment on the first of every month. Beautiful. Every single month, I take my own Just It's almost like taking your pulse. How am I doing today? Yes, yes. You yes. Know, what areas am I doing good so you can pat yourself on the back? And what areas yes. do I need to do some adjustments? Absolutely. Navigate and, them better. And we are all learners. We all want to grow. We all want to improve. And that is life. Unless we don't do that, then we are not living. We are existing. So I totally agree. It would be great to do, like, at some point, maybe another, maybe an interview, six months or whatever, and just go over the personal health assessment. Like, this is what self care sounds like. And I, I do would love to do it. Like, yeah, I, I do workshops, uh, like, all over the world on this assessment that by, by itself. But that's as a side note. We do need no. to take care of ourselves physically, mostly mentally, and spiritually. 
totally totally and i like your quote that uh, the difference between what you are and what you are going to become is what you do and that exactly i would love to have to bring you on board second time because unless you don't do what is required what is needed and for what you want and what you deserve i think uh, personal health assessment could be one of the, the thing because it is not physical assessment it is assessment of your phys- both emotional all of this emotional spiritual maybe mental and those things play a vital role which which we most of the time ignore and neglect and why to do so and be, before it it hits you like a deer gets hit by a car because it neglects i would not say neglect because of what how it is built but then we have that capability to be aware be aware be self aware we, we do self analysis self uh, retrospection and be live the best life we can so i totally agree and would love to bring you on board for exactly that yeah and i have to share one quick story for we have time we have story for like 2 minutes yes sure absolutely Very before sure, you finish sorry. i will have definitely one question but yeah please do yes So in the middle of the pandemic I I I re- there was a CEO of a healthcare organization that reached out to me and said my physicians my doctors my MDs are so burned out you know they were on the front lines right they're so burned out they 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 suffer from PTSD I can you get them some help can you do, can you do a presentation to them so there were physicians and chief nursing officers and so on like you know the high end of in hospital administration and so on so I kind of go through my personal health assessment and we do it and we score it live like live when we're doing it so at the end we're done, you know I'm done with my presentation workshop and one of the an, an elderly gentleman an elderly doctor like in his like 70s i think you know the gray hair like you know he's still working though god bless him he says you know dr elia it's not like, it's not like you told us something we don't already know we know all these things and i smiled at him i said i said i know and i forget his name doctor let's call him dr smith i said i know you know these things but are you doing them doing it and he broke into this big smile and goes no i'm not doing them and thank exactly. you for the reminder thank you for the reminder so in life it doesn't matter what we know what matters mm-hmm. is what do we do with what we know absolutely yeah i you agree know, that was a perfect example with him of course he knew it. he's a physician he of course he knows all this stuff but he's not doing them and he's not doing consistently so he says if he send me a private email after he goes thank you so much for the reminder i really needed to hear this because i know these things i just don't do them there you go thank you thank you no thank you for a great story you. though that's a great story i mean it's a it's a definitely great story and touching story which will open everyone I mean, it has opened my eyes definitely because i do lot of things but i now connect myself that yes at the same time assessment is also required uh, at the same time no because you don't want to stray a stray on a different direction different path and why to miss out on any particular thing which you which you know that you are able to bring into the focus to lead the direction in the direction and navigate your life successfully and happily and i'll so, send this to you so you please share with please, your uh, please please absolutely. thank you thank you so before we close i think i have one very important question which i have seen in your both the books and you have been talking lot of all almost in each every talk the call to action you always said service to others and practicing kindness can you yeah. please share i truly believe in it i do it myself but i want to have your perspective and listeners to understand and see how it is so vitally important for one's happiness and it especially helps with the challenges as you face when and when situation arises please well go back to what my grandfather said right do something good for somebody else every day and you'll be the richest man in the world but i think navigators because they practice self care their own batteries are full so as a result of that they're able to reach out and help somebody else in need mm. and you know, i i give this talks also on a corporate level and organizational level and i say that navigators are great teammates mm. happy employees because navigators are happy and they're happy they're great teammates and people say well, why do you say that i said because they show up at work they've taken care of themselves and they see a colleague or maybe even their boss or a direct report struggling and because their batteries are full they're in a good place say hey what can i do to ease your burden how can i help you today or how can i help you this week oh you know my wife is go home i'll take care of your work yeah i'll i'll True. take care of it i think go that home. that Please is so early let me you know and they perform acts of kindness not because they have to it's no. because they want to and you before when we talked talked a lot about having a positive mindset in mindset is great but what's even greater is where's your heart set 
Mm. I don't even know if that's a word, heart set. I know we know mindset is a word, but heart set. Heart set. Because if your heart is set in the right place, meaning full of love, self love, self forgiveness, self compassion, then you offer that to others. You offer love, you offer compassion through kindness, and you offer forgiveness for others as well that may have, you know, and that's a recipe for a great life. That's why navigators or happy people or happy employees tend to help other people. It it comes natural. And as you know, with kindness, everybody wins, both the giver, because when I perform acts of kindness, believe me, I win too. And of course, the receiver. We we focus on the receiver. Yeah, the receiver is very grateful, but the giver gets something out of it too. And as you know, right? Of course. Of There's course. something innately that makes us feel better when we help another human being, period. And, and it is part, it is built as part of our system, both physiologically and psychology. And that is how we have been made. And that is how we are supposed to live. And God likes it. God wants it to share, to serve and be kind to each other because it is, it naturally is a kind of a ping pong, ping pong. What you give, you will receive. And kindness is the fastest. Is, is, it comes fastest back to you. And in the most, uh, what I have observed, experienced, in most unusual way, unexpected way. So appreciate and I thank you so much for your kindness to be out here. Grateful so much. And uh, one, more, one, one more time, uh, I, I think I, I would love to continue your conversation. It is so enriching. But we'll keep it for next time. And uh, so, uh, and uh, but uh, yeah, uh, any 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 few any last words before we close? Yeah, there's there's one thing I was gonna say. So people said, so what's your biggest takeaway from what's happened to this planet for the last two or three years? I said simply, is this: do not procrastinate your happiness. Beautiful. In other words, most of us live in like, okay, when I'm in the right relationship, or when I get married, or when I have a family, or when my kids grow up, or when they graduate, when they have kids. When I have enough money, when I retire, forget all the wins. There's no guarantee there's any of us will be tomorrow. And as a result of that, live your best life now. Do not procrastinate your happiness. That's my, my big message. Thank you so much. Thank you, all listeners. Stay tuned. A uh, lot more uh, wisdom to come, which when, when I share with you all some of these things which uh, Ilya shared. We'll stay in touch. And uh, so long. Be happy. Be well. Take care of yourself, take care of others and be kind. Thank Namaste. you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you.